Good morning and thank you for joining us on the CompTIA online webinar. My name is Jadine and I will be joined today by David Fury, our HOD at C2 Training Solutions for all our IT programs. Um, we will begin shortly.
right. Um, I would like to thank everyone for joining us on this Com2 webinar. This is our first webinar we'll, we'll be hosting here at C2 Training Solutions. I'd like to kick, kick off by giving you a quick introduction in terms of C2, who we are, upcoming promotional events and um, offers. Um, I'm joined here today by David Furry, who is our Head of Department for our IT programs, who will take you on a journey of Com2 A+, and Network+, and the great things, uh, benefits and opportunities that are available in these certification parts. All right, so before we get started, I would just like to share with you our social media platforms. So um, if you are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, go check out some of our videos, see what we're up to, keep up to date with all the latest promotional offers and events at CTU. And um, we like to share content, so you might find some interesting facts about various industries and technologies. Connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Um, if you get certified, share with the world that you certified and have the credentials and the skills required um, to do the job. Okay. Some housekeeping rules, um, if you could just keep your speakers muted. This recording will be distributed via email by next week and will also be made available on our website on demand page. We'd also like to ask that you submit questions via the chat panel. The questions will be answered as submitted throughout the webinar. Please answer the polls on the right hand side once they appear. All right. So C2 Training Solutions upcoming events and promos, I'd like to start off with some of our upcoming part-time courses. What's nice about c is we offer over 900 individual short courses at CTU. They are flexible, they're short and affordable. You'll see that we offer day, evening and Saturday classes. You can keep track of all these upcoming training dates at our, for our 15 campuses nationwide on our training schedule on the CTU website. You can even subscribe to some training courses so that you get the latest updates as they happen. Some of the part-time courses that we offer at CTU range from Cisco, CompTIA, EC Council, Fiber Optics for those who like splicing and working in networks. Um, very hot and in demand program at the moment. We have some IT security, Microsoft Training, SUS, VMware, and a new one from Adobe would be Adobe Animate. Get yourself skilled in Adobe Animate, who has now recently taken over the Adobe Flash. Uh, we even have some Autodesk programs. Products are very, very in demand at the moment. Certified Internet Webmaster for all those developers out there who are looking to integrate their website, make it mobile friendly, and add e-commerce to their site. Security is the number one. Uh, conversation amongst developers these days, consider getting a certified internet webmaster, CIW certification to um, stand out from the crowd. Uh, we also have a Coral Draw course and a certified business professional training courses which are available to all those who wish to upskill their soft skills. So if you are looking at leadership, sales, business etiquette, project management, What's different about these soft skills is that they are aligned to international certification. So that validates that you have the necessary skills to do the job. We also have a couple of ICB courses from entrepreneurship, office management, business management. You um, can do this part-time in the evenings and on Saturdays. We also have ITIL, COBIT, PRINCE2. Our project management courses are extremely popular at CTU, so make sure you speak to a course consultant today and get booked. You can now pay and book online, easy and secure. All right, so some of the um, upcoming promotional offers that we have at CTU, we've got the Comptia A Plus and Network Plus package for 9999. This package uh, promotional offer will end on the 31st of August. And for all of those um, guys online who are considering a career in IT, this is definitely the stepping stone. This is where you start. Art, um, to kickstart your career in IT. You will learn all the fundamentals um, and David will take you through some of that later on. All right, so Microsoft certification exams, something I'd like to mention here is if you are preparing for Microsoft international exams, consider the Microsoft replay exam, formerly known as Microsoft second shot, where you can attempt an international exam um, with the freedom of knowing that you have a second opportunity to rewrite if you don't pass the first time. So within 24 hours, you can reschedule your exam at any of our testing centers nationwide. We have 15 campuses, 199 testing seats. 
All right, then we have full qualifications part-time. This is a massive opportunity for you to aid in your career progression. You study two evenings a week, two Saturdays a month, between all of the programs and products that we have on offer, from graphic design, project management, HR management, you'll be sure to get your career on path. So have you been considering maybe changing your career path? Maybe you wanna add some value to your current resume? These products are a great value add. There's a 500 Rand registration fee, 20% deposit to finalize your registration. Speak to your consultants at a campus near you. We have a February intake and a June mid-year intake. We also offer self-paced programs. You'll see there's a, a variety of programs we offer there in terms of project management, generic management, and HR. This is a flexible path to success for you. You can start any Monday in the, in the year, and it's a program that fits your busy life. So consider getting a national qualification that are aligned to international certifications. You can add even more value to your qualification by doing a career add-on program or even adding an international exam. All right, so Microsoft Mark on Demand. I'd like to introduce you uh, to Microsoft Mark on Demand as a convenient, cost-effective, and time-efficient product that we offer at CTU. These are available for most of the Microsoft IT technical and programming um, related short courses that we offer through Microsoft. Um, what's nice about the product is that you have access to content for 90 days, um, high definition videos and hands-on labs that will prepare you for international exam. This little product is amazing for those guys who have little or no time to sit in a full five-day uh, course on campus. So you can learn a little or a lot from anywhere at any time from the comfort of your seat. So we hope up you book and register for this mark and demand gives you a great taste as to what the product is all about and it's led by professionals from Microsoft itself the last promotional offer that I would like to bring to your attention is our make us an offer went live yesterday we have an offer where you can um, choose from any of our listed courses um, that you see on the screen in front of you you can make the offer and we will accept, reject or counter. It's really that simple. So tell us the price you're willing to pay and we'll accept, reject or, or counter. Um, there's no obligation to purchase and you can check out some of these courses on c2training.ac.za. Right, well that's all from me. Thank you very much again for joining us during the session. Uh, David Faree will be taking over and he'll introduce you to Compte A Plus and Network Plus. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jadine, for the introduction to CTU Training Solutions. Um, today we'll discuss CompTIA and what are the two baseline or the base courses that we can use and that you can study as an introduction and kickstart your, your IT career. Um, so as we said, Jadine gave us a nice introduction to CTU. So we'll immediately move over to CompTIA and who is CompTIA, what is CompTIA, We'll go a little bit deeper into A plus and N plus so that we can just see what the courses are about and it, if it is the actual course that you would like to do. So what is CompTIA or who is CompTIA? So if you look at CompTIA as such is CompTIA, which is the acronym for the Computing Technology Industry Association, and it's a non-profit trade association that issues professional certifications for the industry. Now, with the high demand for qualified and professional individuals, not only in South Africa, but worldwide, CompTIA certification made it possible to deliver these IT professionals and fill these gaps in the market uh, with skilled professionals that will be able to do the job itself. 
Furthermore, at CTU, it is not only about the, the math and the science of our industry, but it's also about the soft skills that we're going to teach you while you are studying at CTU Training Solutions. Soft skills like presentation skills, and we'll also look a bit in communication skills, problem solving skills, and the ability to listen, which is an essential part of to be a successful um, for a successful career in the IT industry. Uh, furthermore, uh, the current job market analysis shows that there is a great need for qualified professionals in the IT industry. The search shows that 93% of hiring managers shows that there are a great need for qualified professionals in the IT industry. The search shows that 93% of hiring managers believe that IT certification and is valuable and validating expertise because it's the only measuring stick that they have. 80% of employees reward the employees passing their certification exams with an increase in pay, bonus, and promotion. We have to remember that the world has become very small due to technology, and collaboration between companies in different countries has become possible, and it would, um, would surely be impossible without knowledge of foundation technologies covered in A plus and N plus. So let's have a look, why do we, do we need CompTIA? So CompTIA is held by over 1 million IT professionals worldwide. Your IT success story starts with CompTIA A plus certification. It validates the understanding of the most common hardware and software technologies in business. Even if you, even if you are now new to the IT industry, you've got no previous experience and certifies that the skills necessary to support complex IT infrastructures CompTIA A-Plat is a powerful credential that helps IT professionals worldwide to, I, to ignite the IT career. An overview of the A-Plus qualification. So A-Plus is comprehensive um, and, and vendor neutral. But what, what do we mean by comprehensive and vendor neutral? It means that the A-Plus certif uh, certified professionals have mastered the techniques found in today's extensive and varied IT environments, from mobile to traditional devices and operating systems. They can confidently handle the most challenging technology problems for uh, more efficiently with the skills that they will be able to learn during these qualifications. A plus validates foundational skills. A plus establishes the best practices in troubleshooting, networking, and security across a, a variety of devices to set the stage for an IT career. The certification also matches professional tech skills with communication skills. A plus is also trusted by employees. As business and governments worldwide continue to adopt mobile and cloud technology, the trust they trust A-plus certified professionals to keep their devices running and organized working smoothly. A-plus is globally recognized and accredited. CompTIA A-plus is compliant with ISO 17024 standards and is, for example, approved by the U.S. Department of Defense to meet certain directive requirements. A-plus is also industry supported. A-plus is developed and maintained by leading IT experts. Content from, uh, for the exam stems from a combination of industry-wide surveys, feedback, and contribution from other teams of subject matter experts. So let's have a look. When we start talking about A+, um, and to get certified in the A+, qualification, we'll have to look what type of international exams you will write. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the exam code that you will need to write to get certified as an a professional. The exam code is the CompTIA a 2209 and CompTIA a 220902. So you will notice it's two international exams that you will have to write. The first exam, the 901 exam, covers mainly the hardware side of the A-plus qualification, and the 902 part covers the software part of the A-plus qualification. You will encounter roughly about 90 questions inside the A-plus exam, and the type of questions that you can expect is the multiple choice questions, single and multiple responses, drag and drop, 
Um, in addition to the traditional multiple choice format questions, some CompTIA exams include performance-based questions. Now, these questions test your ability to solve problems in a simulated, simulated environment. The general length of these exams is usually about 90 minutes. And passing score is for your 901 exam is 675 out of 900. And for your 902 exam, you'll need at least 700 out of a possible 900. Now, from previous, you will notice that exams do change on a regular basis. The previous exams, which was the 801 and 802, was phased out, and it was replaced by the 901 and 902 exams. Now, a lot of people ask now, what is it if I do, if I did write the 801 exam and 802 exams, what can I expect? What do I need to relearn? Um, has it changed so dramatically that I have to redo the whole A plus qualification? And the answer is no. You can upskill from your 801, 802 to a 901 and 902. So, roughly about 70% of the exam objectives covered in 901 and 902 are identical to the previous versions, which was 801 and 802. Some of the older technologies have thankfully been replaced, and some new topics have been added. So say goodbye to Rambus, CRTs, and Windows XP, and say hello to the new Windows 8, um, Mac operating systems, Linux, and Windows phones. The overall structure of these exams have been revised to make each exam more self-contained, Unlike the old 802 exam that ex expected you to know the troubleshooting process for every topic across the exam, the new 901 and the new 902 have their own individual troubleshooting domains. So you will be tested when you're doing your hardware, you will test, be tested for troubleshooting on the hardware side. And then when you move over to the 902 exam, you will be then tested on a 902 troubleshooting, for example. You can now focus your study efforts on passing a single exam before clearing the slate and starting on the next exam. This will be a big change to every student's study plan. In order, the new things that now has changed is um, the renewal of any international exam. So, for example, to get the most out of your certification, uh, the industry asks that you do upskill or you do retake certain exams so that you can keep up to the trends of new technology. So, why do I need to renew my certification? By keeping your certification up to date with CompTIA's continuing education program, it is designed to be conti uh, continued validation of your expertise and a tool to expand your skill set. Information technology is an incredibly dynamic field, as we all know, creating new opportunities every day. New technologies sprung up on a daily basis, so we need to keep track of these new technologies. But the participating in the CE program will enable you to stay current with new and evolving technologies and remain a sort of the IT expert. Your CompTIA A plus certification is good for for three years from the day of the exam. The CE program allows you to extend your certification in three-year intervals through activities and training that related to the content of your certification. It is easy to renew by participating in a number of activities and training programs, including higher certificates to renew your CompTIA a certification. Collect at least 20 continuing education units in three years, upload to your certification account and A plus will automatically be renewed. Now everybody asks me if I do study and I'm not sure and I'm new to the industry, what exactly will be covered in the A plus curriculum? What will I study? How will I study? What tools are available for my studies? Um, we also got to remember CTU Training Solutions prides, prides itself on the practical side that's also accompanied by your a plus qualification so not only will you learn the theory but you will also be able to do the practical practice in a simulated environment or on the actual 
um, tools or the, the computers that you're going to use so that we know that when you are done with your international exam, you will be able to go out, find a job, and then be able to do the job for the specific qualification. So let's look at the curriculum for uh, A+. First of all is operational procedures that we're going to look at. Um, in there we'll have workplace safety and safe equipment handling which is quite important. You don't want to break the computer even before it starts. Uh, cable management, um, we also look at using appropriate tools. What tools do we use when we're taking a PC apart um, um, in order for safety, for safety for the computer and also safety for you repairing the actual PC. Lifting and moving equipment. Operating system fundamentals. We'll have to look at a short introduction to Windows systems the purpose of operating systems and the many flavors of Windows. As you all know, we've gone through a, a Windows 8, 8.1, and the new one now is Windows 10, so you will be kept up to date with the latest technology in the a qualification. Next one that we'll look at is a personal computer components, motherboards and processors. So what makes the computer tick? So we'll look at the hardware and we'll also look at hardware toolkits that we use to repair PCs. Personal computer components, memory, adapters and storage. So we'll also look at a memory. We'll look at RAM and ROM. Expansion cards and built-in adapters, display adapters. And we'll also look at sound cards. The next chapter that we'll look at is power supplies, display devices, and peripherals. So we'll look at fans, AC adapters. We'll also look at power supply, form factors, and connectors. We'll look at connecting power to peripherals. Um, and all these things that I'm actually explaining now, especially in this section where we say power supplies, display devices, peripherals, will demonstrate with a simulation a little bit later in the presentation. We'll also look at energy efficiency. We'll also look at removing a power supply, installing a power supply successfully. Then we'll look at installing and upgrading PC components. So looking at selecting compute, uh, components for a custom PC, either be a PC for the working environment or a gaming PC. We'll also look at virtualization workstation. We'll also look at installing and upgrading motherboards and, um, and onboard components, uh, replacing a motherboard, installing a motherboard. And that will be part of our simulation a little bit later. The next one that we'll look at and the next topic in our curriculum is configuring and using laptops. So we'll look at installing and upgrading laptops. What is a laptop? And we'll also use an opening a laptop case. As we know, we get various types of laptops in the industry. So we'll teach you how to open up these various laptops and their laptop components. Next topic is client-side virtualization. We'll have an introduction to virtualization, purposes of virtualization. Then we'll look at server-side virtualization versus the client-side virtualization. And then we'll also look at types of client-side virtualizations. The next topic is upgrading, installing, and configuring operating systems, upgrading Windows. So if you have a client that you need to upgrade maybe from a Windows XP or from a Windows 7 to the latest technology, we'll teach you how to do it. Um, we'll also look at why do we need to upgrade? Because we've got to remember as technology grows, and new technologies introduced, uh, some of the actual operating system don't support these new technologies. So we need to understand when do we upgrade and why do we upgrade. And then we we'll also look at pre-upgrade tasks. What do I have to have in place before I start my upgrade for a laptop or for a PC or a standalone computer? The next thing, one that we'll look at part of the curriculum is disk and file management. So we'll look at disk management on your computer and managing disks in the Windows environment. The next topic is PC hardware, troubleshooting and maintenance. Preparing for troubleshooting, as we all know, we don't live in a perfect world. There's always problems in, um, that users will encounter. And we'll teach you how do you prepare yourself mentally sometimes to do these troubleshooting 
Um, we'll also look at protecting systems and gathering tools. So we also need to understand that we need to protect our information that is on our computers. We do work sometimes with sensitive information. So how do we go about protecting this? And then the next one that we'll look at is operating systems, troubleshooting and maintenance. So we'll also look quickly on how can I, for quick fixes, um, so that the, the user can still use the computer to be able to do his work, then rather taking out the computer, do a lengthy repair on it, which will put him behind schedule, for example. So we'll look at quick fixes. Um, we'll also look at Windows troubleshooting tools. Then we're going to go delve a little bit deeper into the BIOS uh, for operating system troubleshooting. And then we're going to look at command prompt terminals. The next one in the curriculum is network basics. They, there we now start moving over to the 902 side. Um, that we also look at network classifications. We'll also look at personal area networks, local area networks, metropolitan area networks, and wide area networks, which is quite important. You need to understand what type of network fits with your company should it be required. Then we'll also look at installing a small office or home office that we will call we call it a SOHO network. So we'll learn how to use the internet network tools, um, crimper and wire strippers. It's quite important to make sure when you do build a, a cable that connects your network inside your company or inside your house. Um, what type of tools do we use? Uh, what type of, of wires or cabling do we use? What type of connectors do we use? Um, we'll also look at the punch down tool. We'll look at multimeters to make sure that our connection is secure and that it actually works. We'll also look at tone generator and probes. And then we'll look at your cable tester, which is probably one of the most important tools, especially if you're working on long distances inside the company to set up a network. Um, so to make sure that if you do have a cable, you did your connection, you put your RJ45 plug on there, does it actually work? The next one that we'll look at is internet and cloud basics. Um, cloud basics has now been coming the trends in the past few years. And so we'll look there at internet concepts. We'll look at how the internet is structured, which is very important. Internet service providers. We'll also look at domain names. IP addresses and DNS servers. We'll also look at internet services and protocols. So um, protocols is quite important and quite extensive in this specific topic. We'll look at different types of servers that you get and we'll also look at internet applications. Next topic is troubleshooting and networks. Troubleshooting common network problems. Um, and that is going to happen. Um, as I said, not a perfect world. You're going to have clients or your clients inside your company that needs to do something quick. There's a network problem. They can't do their work. They can't get into the internet or they can't send an email. So how do we go about troubleshooting these common network problems to be able to find a quick fix for, 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 for your customer? Then we'll look at tools for network troubleshooting. What types of tools do we use? And then we'll also look at connectivity problems. Next topic is computer security fundamentals. We'll look at security threats and that's become more and more in any company these days um, with ethical hacking, hacking of computer systems. Um, you have sensitive information in a company, for example, let's talk about a bank, for example, where you have all these clients information, uh, banking details, PIN codes and all those type of information. So you need to find out and make sure what types of threats are there in the industry and how do I go about securing the company against these threats? We'll look at computer hardware theft. Um, yeah, that's quite a sensitive topic in the sense of how do I secure my pieces inside my company so that I prevent from hard drives being taken out or RAM being taken out. Um, so that's, that's, that's quite very important as well. Then we'll also look at disaster big and small. Um, for example, we'll look at server rooms, how do I prevent disasters? So how do I go about preventing, if there is a fire, what should I do inside my server rooms? How should, I, how should I set up my server rooms to prevent natural disasters, for example? Threats to individuals, uh, malicious software attacks, we'll also look at vulnerabilities and exploits 
and then we'll also look at a new topic called gray wear. Next one is implementing digital security. So we'll have a look at that in more detail. We'll also look at configuring Windows clients. So how do I give access to my user on the actual system inside the company? And also we'll using and supporting printers. Um, it's a small section, also a very important section. Keep the company connected so that they are able to do their work. Now, the people also ask me is, for example, now I've, I've studied all this, but how do I prepare myself for the international exam? And as we all know, or for those who don't know, international exams are not one of the easy exams to write. So you should have a theoretical background, but you should also have an extensive practical background. So that's why we pride ourselves to do the practicals as well. So you'll notice, for example, in the A+, plus, I'm only going to talk about the new exam, which is a 220901. You'll notice on a domain number one, um, hardware is usually about 34% of your total exam. Your 902, your second domain, which is called your networking, about 29% of your total exam will be covered in networking. Mobile devices will usually cover about 17% in your, in your international exam and your domain for hardware and network troubleshooting is usually about 28%. So you'll notice the bulk of your exam will come from your hardware section, which is 34%, and your troubleshooting part, which is 28%. Um, we'll have a more detailed list available for you guys that you can download so that you can see, okay, in domain one, what type of um, information is then asked in these domains. When we look at the 902 exam, we'll look at domain one, which is your software side of your A plus qualification. We'll look at Windows operating systems. That's about 29%. Uh, other operating systems and technologies will cover 12%. Security is 22%. Software troubleshooting is 24%. And operational procedures is 13%. Now we've got to remember the international exams is has got a, a huge database of questions. So you will notice if you do write an international exam and you did fail the international exam and you go rewrite the exam, the chances are about 10% that you will res, um, get all the questions you had previously. So you have to know your content very, very well as the exams changes from a person sitting next to you writing the same exam in yourself, you will see that the questions will not even match. So preparation is key. All right. So let's move over before we do our virtual presentation. Or let's rather do our virtual presentation now. So I'm going to switch over to the screen. You will notice the link that we have there. You're more than welcome to, to go to the link and you will be, as soon as you click on the link, you will notice the following screen on the computer. Now this screen is a virtual desktop for building a specific PC. Now when we start, you, it's got a nice environment. What's nice about the virtual desktop is it prevents you from breaking any PCs. So there's no, no issues when you break the program to restart it, but it might be an issue if you work with the actual hardware and you break a hard drive or you break the motherboard, it can be quite expensive. So when you look at the, the the actual virtualization on, on the screen itself, it's quite self-explanatory. Um, it's supplied by Cisco um, and it takes you step by step, for example. So you start at the top where it says power supply and it gives you all the tools at the bottom there that you need to do to be able to install the power supply. Now, what we need to do is you will have an empty box on the screen in front of you. So we start off by the left hand side you can either double click on the actual um, hardware tool uh, component or you can just drag it, not a problem. And then what's nice about this is you need to know how is it installed. So it's got a little rotating bar on it. As soon as it's correct, it will install the actual power supply for you. Um, you'll also notice if it is not correctly installed. So let's say for example, that part. And I'm trying to install it, it will tell you that it's unsuccessful. You need to install it correctly. So let's install the power supply. 
The next thing that we need to do, we need to screw down the power supply. So you can just double click on this and it will automatically insert the screws for you. As soon as it's successful, you can look at the screen on the left hand side. You will notice if you are successful, if there is maybe problems that was encountered during the exercise, it will tell you what the problems are and you can go and correct these problems. So let's look at the motherboard, for example. It asks me to now install the RAM. So I can double click on the RAM, for example. And it shows me the RAM on the screen. Now I need to remember, okay, now how does the RAM being installed like this? Or is it installed like this? So let's do it this way. And I install my, my, my RAM as such. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to pin down the actual RAM. There we go. And it is successful. It's going to ask me to in install another RAM for the computer. If we are correct, it needs to be this way around. We install it. Not correct. Okay, so then I twist it a bit. Still not correct. So let's see. There we go. And I pin down the actual computer component. The next thing that I need to do is I need to install the CPU. Here we go. So I need to install it correctly. There we go. Next thing that I need to do is as soon as my CPU is installed, I need to add some thermal paste. All right, so what is a CPU? Some people might ask, it's your central processing unit. And if we talk about RAM, for example, RAM is your random access memory. Sorry, there we go, let's just install this. Now we're gonna add our thermal paste. There we go. We're gonna add our thermal paste to the computer. And now we're going to add our heatsink um, heat to the actual processor and we're going to pin down the actual heatsink. So you'll notice this environment is quite extensive. Um, you need to install components correctly, otherwise it will not work. It will even ask you to actually um, connect the wiring on it. So it's quite important um, that, it, that you do all the steps in this um, virtual environment to be able to su succeed. As soon as this is done, you can move over to the actual components, maybe in the physical um, hardware, um, which, will, which will then um, make your life 10 times easier. All right, I'm gonna move away from this. It's quite an extensive lab or virtual machine that you can use. Um, so you're more than welcome to download it, play around with it, and then you can move over to the physical hardware. Right, the next thing that we're going to look at quickly is your Network Plus. That's the next objective in our slideshow, as you can see. So wh why come to your Network Plus? Um, the stakes are high if we look at the IT industry these days and how fast it grows and where more and more information is available on the internet and in the cloud. Data networks are more crucial for businesses than ever before. We need to stay connected, um, especially if you look at your house situation is um, if you want to have a big war in the environment, you must say the network is down. Nobody can do anything. They can't get connected. They can't get to the internet. They can't share folders. They can't. So basically, if no network, the guys won't be able to do their work. They are the... So networks are the um, lifeline to the critical financial, healthcare, and information services that need to function at the highest, most secure level. And you will notice the word secure again. With a CompTIA Network Plus certification, you will possess the key skills to troubleshoot, configure, and manage these systems and keep a company productive. So let's have a quick overview on the specific Network Plus qualification. So network is also vendor neutral and globally recognized. Uh, network Plus makes you shine in a growing industry and Network Plus meets the highest standards. Right. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to post them to us. 
If we can't get them to you immediately, we'll definitely, after the webinar, we'll answer your questions in any regard. So let's have a look. Um, the exam also for the, the, the exam code or the, the, the exam that you will write for your International Network Plus qualification is called N10006. You will also be encountering 90 questions, which also, as in the A plus qualification, will be multiple choice, drag and drop. Um, but these questions, all, it will also include uh, performance-based questions. Um, and as you can remember, these questions test your ability to solve problems in a simulated environment. Also 90 minutes and the passing score for your Network Plus certification is 720 out of 900. As in the A-plus certification or the international exam, there is also changes from the old exams. Um, so many materials of the CompTIA A A A Network Plus certification exam objectives um, has mostly stayed the same. There is a few technologies or few questions. Um, the database was broadened with the new technologies that are available. And there's also a greater emphasis uh, but on practical knowledge. Uh, this is demonstrated in part by the use of terminology such as installing, configuring, implementing, managing and troubleshooting around many of the new objectives. They say that you can make statistics say whatever you want, um, but to say and that holds to a certain extent to when it comes to analyzing the differences between those two exams. However, no matter how you look at its changes, changes um, are very significant. All right, so you'll have to make sure if you did write the old exam, which was the N10005 exam, make sure that you upskill to the new exam properly. Again, as with the A+, you also need to renew your new Network Plus qualification on a regular three-year basis. So let's have a quick look on the curriculum. So when we start looking at Network Plus, we'll look at LANs. Um, also, LAN is a local area network, and in WANs, which is your wide area networks, and we'll also look at different types of network architecture. Then we'll look at open system. Open system interconnection specifications. We we'll look at internetworking models. And we'll also look at the OSI reference model. Next one that we'll look at is the network topology connecting the wired standards. So we'll look at different types of wiring that we'll get in the curriculum. For example, example coaxial cables, twisted pairs, and, and then we'll also look at transmission speeds over a network. What type of cable is more sufficient for high speed data transfers? We look at the current Ethernet specifications, network basics, and also Ethernet basics. We'll all look at network devices, so what types of devices are in our network. We look at hubs, breaches, and switches, for example. We'll also have an introduction to the Internet protocol. So we'll look at TCP and IP addresses. Uh, we'll also look at a DOD model and we'll also look at the application layer protocols. The next chapter in our topic is the IP addressing. So we'll look at what is IP terminology. We'll also look at the hierarchical IP assess addressing scheme. We'll move over to IP subnetting, which also includes troubleshooting the IP and introduction to NAT. We'll look at introduction to IP routing, routing protocols. We'll also look at switching and virtual LANs, local area networks. We'll look at wireless networks, which has come more and more used in the working environment. So we'll look at introduce, introduction to wireless technology. We'll also look at a range comparisons. We'll also look at wireless network components wireless access points, and also mobile hotspots. Next chapter is authentication and access control. Now, there we will look at security filtering. Again, security is quite a big topic in Network Plus as well. How do we secure our, inv our information inside our company? Access control lists. 
and tunneling and then also we'll look at remote access. So how do I gain access to my company should I be working at home for example? Network threats and mitigation. Uh, recognize security threats or so what types of security threats do we get? We'll look at viruses that are now so so much uh, viruses that's been that's been launched by by people on the outside that can to completely crash your 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 network environment, steal information, or wipe out the information completely at your company. Uh, we'll look at vulnerabilities. So we'll go into a company, for example. We'll analyze the environment, and we'll be able to tell the client, "Listen, this is all the vulnerabilities that is there, and this is how we can help you to secure your information." Open portals and we'll also look at wireless threats. Then we'll look at physical security and risks using hardware and software security devices, defining the firewall, so how to protect myself, my company information from the outside. We'll look at access control list, port security, and proxy service. Then we'll look at a wider picture, which is called a wide area network, and we'll also look at troubleshooting tools, for example, protocol anal analyzers, throughput testers, and also connectivity software. Software and hardware tools is another topic that's covered, which is quite important. Understanding the network scanners, uh, packet sniffers, port scanners, Wi-Fi analyzers, and also network monitoring. The next topic is network troubleshooting. And then lastly, the last chapter is called Management and Monitoring and Optimization. So managing network documentation, for example, uh, network monitoring. So how do I need to make sure that if I do have a network, I need to monitor it con uh, um, constantly to make sure it, it is operating in an optimal environment. Also baselines, uh, policies, procedures, and regulations, and safety practices. Now, if we look at the curriculum versus the exam, so you'll notice uh, in your Network Plus architecture, network architecture is the first part, which is roughly about 22%. And network operating uh, operations is 20%. Network security is 18%. Troubleshooting is one of the biggest components inside the Network Plus, which covers 24%. And then also industry standards, practices, and network theory, which is roughly about 16%. That's all from my side. Um, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to post them for me. Then we've got about five minutes for, for questions, should you have any. Right, so you'll notice with your A plus and Network Plus certification, um, you will have all the foundational tools that you do need if you are a current specialist in the IT industry or if you've just come out of school, for example, and you want to venture into the exciting world of networking, um, I really do suggest that you start off with your A plus certification first, then move over to your network certification. As explained by Jadine a little bit earlier, there is specials available currently for these two qualifications. So please do look at them um, as soon as possible. I know classes get filled quite quickly. Um, yeah, and then as just to, to emphasize the, the philosophy of CTU training solutions is we'll do the theory, but we will also do extensive practicals so that we make sure when you're either into the international exams and I should ask a technical question that you will be able to answer these questions um, and also when you do go into the industry that you are ready for for the industry and to be able to do the work as, uh, itself as well. Just with regards to the international exams, um, with CTU Training Solutions, we also do prelim exam or preliminary exams um, where we'll take you um, and help you to prepare for these tough international exams so that you are ready, confident when you walk into the international testing center, that you're not nervous, um, you're confident you will be able to 
to do the work and you will be able to answer the questions successfully and that we all do with our preparation for you before you actually do write the international exam we'll sit down with you and prepare you sufficiently for these international exams right thank you ladies and gentlemen um, please keep your eyes open for our next um, webinar. Thank you.